back in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 6, as we are looking at studying the Lord's Prayer to be able to develop a more powerful prayer line. We'll just read verse number 9 this evening and begin to look at some powerful prayer principles that are found here in the Lord's Prayer. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Again, Father, we pray your blessings upon the word. Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayer is the more, most important thing that we can do in our life as believers because prayer can do anything God can do. And what can God do? God can do anything. Prayer is not just a meaningless habitual task that is required of us as believers in Christ. It's, it is time when we connect with God in his person and in his power. And if we are to have a powerful prayer life, there are five principles in the Lord's Prayer that apply to every prayer that we pray in our life. And we're going to look at the first couple of those here tonight. The first principle that we see there is that and it, this may be just very simple and logical, but it is important. The first principle is that prayers are to be prayed, not recited. There are many Christian denominations that have prayer books. And what they do is they recite the prayers out of those books. And that's how they pray. I don't think God meant prayer to be that way. He, he, even, he even said that this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, was not necessarily to be recited word for word every time you pray. To have a powerful prayer life, we shouldn't miss how Jesus introduces what we know as the Lord's Prayer. He says there in that first phrase, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. And the important word there in that phrase is the word manner. Because it means that it is a model for us to pray after. A model to model our prayer life by. We notice that Jesus didn't say to pray this prayer or to memorize and recite this prayer. He says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. We don't just recite prayers, we pray them. Now there may be times to quote this prayer as it is in scripture, but we shouldn't just recite the words. We should pray from the heart. And that's the problem, I think, with a lot of Christians today in their prayer life. Their prayer life doesn't come from their heart. It is something they check off a list or they go to a book and they recite or they repeat over and over and over and over again. And when you do something, when you do something so often, we tend to forget the importance of it. And the significance of it. For me, it's like for me, it's like observing the Lord's Supper every Sunday. And there are churches that do that. And the Bible doesn't prohibit it. It just says, as often as you do, do this in remembrance of me. So even biblically, the Lord's Supper could be done every week here at the Grace Baptist Church. But I believe if we did the Lord's Supper every week, its significance and its importance would be lost because it would become routine and ritual. And that's how our prayer lives become sometimes, routine and ritualistic. 
You ever notice to get in a rut in your prayer life when you're praying the same phrases over and over and over and over again? You say grace the same way every time? <laughs> I notice that in my life. And when I notice that in my life, I have to ask myself, well, you know, maybe I need a little refreshment in my prayer life. Because prayers should come from the heart. Just repeating prayers is not necessarily a spiritual thing. And Isaiah points this out to us in Isaiah chapter 29 and verse number 13. The prophet Isaiah chapter 29. And verse number 13. <coughs> Excuse me. Isaiah 29 and verse 13, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouths, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. People can honor God with their lips, People can honor God with the things that they say, and yet their heart is far away from God. When we pray, our heart should be close to God, should it not? Absolutely. And our prayer should come from our heart. Our praise should come from our heart. God wants our prayers to come from our heart, not just out of our mouths. As Jesus gives us prayer principles that we should incorporate into every prayer. However, our prayers need to come from the heart. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7, in the last phrase of that verse, as God is talking to Samuel about anointing the next king of Israel, he tells Samuel not to look on the outward appearance, for I have refused him. He says there that man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh upon the heart. And at that time, God was looking for a man after his own heart to be king. That man would be David. In our prayer life, we are to pray from our heart because when the Lord looks at us, he looks at our heart. And he knows whether the words coming out of our mouth are sincere and from the heart or not. Because he looks at our heart. Prayers are to be prayed and not recited because only then does our prayer come from the heart. The second principle we see is that God can do anything. And I can do nothing. God can do anything and everything and I can can do nothing. When we pray, we don't come to offer God's, God assistance, believe it or not. We don't go to God and say, how can I help bring about your kingdom today? We come to God asking for the privilege to be part of his plan and his program. We come to God thanking God for the privilege that he makes us part of his family and part of his kingdom and his program. 
to get the gospel out. In the Gospel of John chapter 15 and verse number 5, in the last phrase of that verse, the Bible says, Without me, ye can do nothing. Without the Lord in our line, we cannot do anything of spiritual or eternal significance without Jesus Christ. We cannot pray and understand the Bible without the Lord. We cannot witness to anyone without the Lord. We cannot pray to anyone without the Lord. And yes, we can go to college, for example, and you can do that without the Lord. A lot of people do. You can get a job, and it's very easy to get a job in our society today. You you know, you just have to, you know, pick whichever one you want. There are so many of them. Everybody's got to help one to sign up. Well, my wife won't let, me, won't, won't let me go to work. She says I already have a job. I, I just I don't understand it. <laughs> but we can go to college. We can get a job. We can make a lot of money. We can have an impressive career and even become famous, possibly, which is also very easy to do in our society because of social media. I still don't know what the Kardashians are famous for. Except being Kardashians. What have they done to be famous? I don't know. But social media today makes nobodies into somebodies. Overnight. We can do all of that. But we... But we can do nothing of real eternal significance without Jesus Christ. Without me, you can do nothing. Our church cannot grow without Jesus Christ. Our prayer life is nothing without Jesus Christ. And when God sent the angel Gabriel to Mary... To announce that she will have a son and call his name Jesus. Mary asks, how can this be, seeing I know not a man? And in Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, Gabriel answers and says that with God, all things are possible. Not with me, but with God, all things are possible. And that's how Mary could conceive as a virgin and bring forth a son, and that son could be named Jesus and could grow up in this world and die upon the cross for our sins. This principle means that God can, that God can accomplish whatever he wants here on earth without our help. God doesn't need our help. Therefore, whatever God gives us to do as his purpose or his will for our lives is a privilege. David Livingstone, the great pioneer missionary to Africa, never thought of his service to the Lord and his missionary work as work. And he suffered a lot. If you read about his life and you read about his story, he went through sickness after sickness and suffered a lot for the sake of getting the gospel to the continent of Africa. He also mapped out many of the maps of Africa that we have today. He was a Lewis and Clark, if you will, of his time in the country of Africa. Yet he said that it was a privilege to serve God. Not a sacrifice, a privilege to be able to serve God. We don't tend to look at that as a privilege. 
We tend to look at it as a duty. We tend to look at it as an obligation. We tend to um, look at it as, you know, oh, all this work and work and work and work. And yes, it's hard. And yes, it requires some labor. But I tell you, the greatest privilege there is in the world is to be able to work for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is the greatest privilege that we have as believers in Christ. It is the privilege to be able to serve him. And it's a privilege to be able to serve him and to do his will for us because God could create someone else to do it better. It's my great privilege to be able to serve as a pastor and as a teacher, especially here at the Grace Baptist Church in Neodysha, Kansas. But God could get thousands upon thousands of people to do everything I do and do it much better than I do it. And that's an honest truth. I have realized that there are better preachers than I am. And there are better teachers than I am, even within our church. There are those that are better than I. But God has given me this privilege. And it is yet because God loves me in spite of all my weaknesses and my shortcomings that he gives me the privilege of serving him. And it is the privilege of serving him. And he gives all of his children that same privilege, the privilege of serving the Lord Jesus Christ in our place, in his kingdom, and Harvest Field. We should never take that for granted. And when we pray to the Lord, we should thank God that he has allowed us this privilege that not everyone gets to be able to serve the Lord. And especially here at the Grace Baptist Church in the Otisha, Kansas. That is a great privilege. Indeed. I'm going to stop here because it's a good place to stop. And we'll continue with these principles here next time. And I hope that you got something you can carry with you as you go.